When thinking of willow, some of us may think of cricket bats, yet not all willow wood is good for cricket bats or for our waterways. Some of Australia's waterways are under a full frontal attack from this invasive exotic species. It's in here somewhere. Gotcha. Hi, I'm Andy from the Adelaide Mount Lofty Ranges Natural Resources Management Board. Willows are a menacing woody weed. Their presence along the banks of our watercourses is overwhelming. Their size and ability to spread has enabled this collection of species and hybrids to dominate riparian areas within our catchments. They were introduced into Australia soon after European settlement for a variety of reasons, including stream stabilisation, shelter, basket making, cricket bat production and ornamental purposes. Numerous species of hybrids and willows have established as weeds in South Australia and most are weeds of national significance. In South Australia, most willows are declared under the Natural Resources Management Act and cannot be legally sold. Willows are deciduous, which means that in autumn they drop their leaves. Most willows spread vegetatively. As plant fragments break off and flow downstream, they attach to the soil and banks of our watercourses and sprout roots and grow into a new plant. There are also a few willow species that produce small seeds with long, silky hairs that are easily dispersed by the wind. Willows can change the character and function of streams in many ways. Willow thickets, fallen branches and shallow root systems such as what I'm standing on here can alter stream flow creating erosion and increasing the risk of flooding. This situation here behind me shows a willow in the centre of the creek. This is catching debris coming downstream, in turn changing the flow of the watercourse, undermining banks causing erosion and increasing the sediment load going downstream. During autumn, willows drop a large amount of leaves in a short space of time. This rotting organic matter combined with the slow stream flows reduces the water's dissolved oxygen. And this is disastrous for aquatic plants, animals and invertebrates. These large pools of stagnant water can result in algal blooms and also reduce the quality of water flowing into our reservoirs. Along our waterways, willows have replaced many native species such as river red gums, reducing the amount of available habitat such as hollows for terrestrial species and fallen logs as snags for our aquatic species such as native fish. Willow removal has to be planned and managed with care as willows are often the dominating vegetation on the banks of our watercourses and their removal can result in bank destabilisation and erosion. Willow seedlings and rooted fragments up to two years old can be removed by hand pulling or using a tree popper or a mattock such as these ones. It's important to remove and dispose of all parts of the weed appropriately to minimise the risk of re-establishment. To avoid the risk of bank erosion, the careful use of herbicide may be more appropriate yet slower approach to controlling willow trees less than two metres tall. Care must be given when spraying larger infestations, ensuring desirable species such as native vegetation is not sprayed. Care also needs to be taken when spraying near waterways. Getting into the water and spraying back towards the bank is the best way to avoid overspray into the water. Adding a dye to the herbicide mixture will help you see where you have sprayed. Once the tree has died, it can stay in situ where it provides habitat for birds and other native animals. For isolated trees or trees in hard to reach places, stem injection may be the appropriate method for control. 
This method is effective on medium to large size willows and allows the tree to die in situ, reducing the risk of stream bank erosion and further spread. Using a chisel and mallet or an ax, cut at a 45 degree angle into the white cambrium layer or sapwood beneath the bark. Repeat this around the entire stem or trunk and have each cut no more than two to three centimetres apart. We want to minimise the flow of the plant's healthy sap stream. Herbicide must be applied within 30 seconds of making the cut. The same philosophy applies with drilling for stem injection. Don't drill into the plant. It's best to drill across the sapwood, exposing as much of it to the chemical, and this will lessen the number of holes to be drilled. An applicator bottle with a nozzle can be used to apply the chemical. If you are using this method, you will need to do this on any forked limbs close to the ground to achieve a better result. It is best to follow up within six to eight weeks of initial treatment to see if parts of the plant are still alive. Cut into the sapwood and if it's still white, the tree is still alive and will need additional follow-up treatment. Alternatively, for small to medium sized plants up to 200 millimetres in diameter, the cut stump method may be appropriate. Using either a handsaw or chainsaw, cut the stem or trunk as close to the ground as possible. For stems less than 10 millimetres, apply the chemical across the whole stem. For stems larger than 10 millimetres, apply the chemical to the white sapwood layer. As with the previous method, apply the chemical immediately. Within 10 to 20 seconds is best. When cutting willows, take all the cuttings to a dry area, not prone to flooding. They will need at least six to eight weeks to dry out. Once completely dry, they pose no threat of reshooting or re-establishment. Mechanical removal involves the use of heavy machinery to cut trees and move felled tree material to higher ground away from the watercourse to rot down or burn at a later stage. This method is more cost effective for controlling large infestations of willow. Large machinery will most likely create erosion issues, so care should be taken to monitor the site and take action if required. It is imperative that all fallen branches and cut material is moved to dry ground to minimise the risk of reshooting and preventing fragments flowing downstream and establishing as a new infestation. Remember, when handling chemicals, follow the label directions and wear the correct personal protective equipment for the task at hand. For more information, contact your local board office.